How would I present the opportunity set of investing in natural resources? Well, one, it's a hell of a lot more than just base metals and precious metals. You know, it's a broad universe as a starting point. You've got energy, soft commodities and services as well. Um, and you've got to be coming at it from the long and the short side. Um, you know, that's where our competitive advantage is in our view. Peer investors are either looking at the universe with too long of a time horizon and suffering economic cycles, um, or they're sometimes, you know, just just not being specialised enough. I think it's, you know, our view is that it's really important to be with investment teams who have competitive edge and who are able to enforce that or, or use that where they can the right way. Um, and for us, the right way is both long and short through this investment universe. Yeah, look, that's, that's, that, that's a really good question about the size of the market. I think, you know, you look at it sitting in Australia and you're generally thinking about BHP, Rio, Woodside, maybe Origin, Santos, Oil Search, et cetera. And then, you, then after that, you're in a long tail of small cap resources companies. Globally, it's a very different situation. You know, it's a, it's a $9 trillion investment universe that we're looking at. Um, you know, that investment universe at $9 trillion, predominantly our portfolio, is about two thirds North America plus Europe. Um, you know, in equity market cap sense, Australia's probably less than 10% of, of, of the equity market cap. And that's not even, that's well before you even get to the credit side of things in the credit landscape. And you know, that, that for us is um, a really important aspect. We've got, you know, that's why we've got presence in Europe. We've got presence in Asia with uh, analysts and, and PMs and, and, and obviously in Australia as well. But for us, that geographic presence in other time zones is really important. People shouldn't underestimate just how big, big that universe is. The process uh, filters out investment ideas. Well, it, it does start at the top down. So we're talking about you know, how are the commodities, how do we see the economic landscape in general? How, you know, what's driving GDP in various countries and globally first? And then what commodities are important to that as sort of subsets of that. Um, after that, you know, all of our investment after that is a, from a bottom up perspective, looking at corporates individually. Um, you know, our, our analysts run models on you know, a couple of hundred stocks, but we're investing in only sort of 30 to 60 at a time um, because we're high conviction and doing a deep dive all the way through that your greatest amount of return will always be from that corporate bottom-up perspective, using the landscape of the, the top-down first, and then you know, making sure that you've got the combination of that top-down and bottom-up right. Yeah, so the good, a good example for our point of view of the life cycle of a trade, you know, something that's gone from sort of being a commodity trade as a starting point, all the way through to an equity trade, and then long short within that as well as oil, um, you know, probably late last year, early this year, every investment bank and other analysts on the street were telling us oil's stuck in a 45 to $55 range. Um, US onshore's got their costs down. So you know, that's why we're stuck. This is one of the reasons why we're stuck there. Now you look at the political and demand and supply aspects in the market at that time. And for us, if the whole market is telling it's 45 to $55, there's nothing surer than that it's probably not gonna stay in that range. So for us, we looked at it, um, took into account all of that. We saw that there was upside to the oil market. Um, so it started for us as a commodity trade. We looked at upside in, in WTI directly as a starting point. What happened then as an evolution in a full life cycle of a trade there was that you know, that turned into an equity trade because oil had moved, but the implied oil price within the US and European oil companies was still extremely low and very dislocated very versus where oil was at that point in time. So then it turned into us for a long equity trade um, and actually you know, through time it had turned into us being sort of short physical oil against the long in the equities. You know, obviously they don't always pan, pan their way through like that within the portfolio, but that's probably a perfect example of commodity view first, equity trade sort of trailing and lagging that and sort of moving to a very investable opportunity and then you know, turning into a full life cycle of long and short within that context of that position.